Hail, Pandawans and journeymen walking that illustrated path. Spring is upon us, finally. Ha <laughs> ha. It has been a spell since I rambled with you. Well, as many of you people know, back in November of 2023, I left my beloved day job from Blizzard. And one of the things I loved about working there was working with my friends, making artwork for games. You know, but since I left... <laughs> things haven't really changed. <laughs> I actually still do work with uh, some Blizzard. I, I just completed a Hearthstone card. Um, one thing that has changed, though, is I get to work with my old friends, uh, who I worked with for years, who had left Blizzard, you know, before me, and started their own game companies. And now that I'm a freelancing Ronin walking that illustrated path, I get to work with all my old friends again and make artwork for their games that they're making. And so it's, it's super fun. And uh, I asked one of the group that I'm working with, my friends at, boop, Frost Giant, yes. Yeah, Frost Giant uh, is made up of a lot of the x Blizz guys, not all of them, but a lot, uh, largely from our old StarCraft team. And Frost Giant is working on an RTS, aka real-time strategy game for the uninformed called Stormgate. So I had talked with them a little while ago. You know, a lot of my buddies work there still, and they asked if I'd be interested in doing some concept art for it. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I can't really show some of the larger stuff that I've been working on, but these fine, distinguished chaps here, I can share. And what these guys are is they are creeps. I'll zoom in on this particular one first. Now, creeps are, you know, they're in creep camps. And what creep camps are, creep camps, it's basically a group of monsters, not necessarily the, the opponent you're fighting, um, but the, the little monsters that guard things like mineral nodes or, you know, magical points or, you know, treasure halls or whatever it is. It's a common term that we've used in Warcraft, Starcraft, and things like that. So I am going to walk through what it takes. Well, not what it takes, but what I do when I'm creating artwork for RTS games first and then for these creep camps here too. So let's turn off that and start at the very beginning. Now, the very beginning is this fine chap here. This is the basic structure I went off on. You know, a typical small, uh, maybe more classic physique, maybe more uh, bikini, you know, weight sort of competitor. It's not like the open body building of the Olympia. He's one of my small characters. <laughs> but basically what I did is I took this this silhouette and I would basically go over it and draw. Now, when you're creating artwork uh, for RTS games, these characters are usually very small. Now, these creeps, the one of the caveats I had, which I, I didn't completely do 100%, but it's supposed to be based off of the biped uh, kind of character rig. Every little unit in the game has basically like the interior skeleton. Like if you've, you know, played with action figures and busted them, you'll see like they have like the little rigs inside them where the rubber band connects to the bow tweeny and the bow tweeny connects to the thingamajig. And uh, so that's, that's kind of what the parameters for this were. So I took a basic character and what they, they said, they gave me a couple different, um, creep camps to choose from. And I started with the first one I just went on. And hopefully I'll be able to show you future videos of the other creeps. Um, but these ones were scavengers. So scavengers are basically these, these creeps that survive out in the world and they're replacing their limbs with, you know, mechanical stuff and junk and all that. So I always, you know, had a love for Sawyer, sort of the warriors of the wasteland sort of characters. I always love that. You know, games like Gamma World had it, Mad Max, all those type of post-apocalyptic things. Now, I know that's not necessarily the story uh, for Stormgate, but it uh, it gave me a good 
image in my mind. And so what I did is I would do the concepts for, we have right here the melee character, right? And because his head's kind of tiny here, um, I just did a quick side view, um, both sides, because the the mask is asymmetrical, which is silly because at game view, you're never going to see that. But I don't know if they're going to be using these characters for any kind of the in-game cinematics or things like that. So it's, it's better to give a little bit more detail uh, than you need. Now, you can see I didn't do a back for this guy for like his legs or his hands and all that. The artist can figure it out. Plus, these are guys I worked with for years. So they've already worked from my concepts back at Blizzard. And now, you know, they're, they get to look at the concepts now. It's funny because um, I'm now in the role of artist and, you know, they're on the, you know, at uh, Frost Giant, they're my art director. So uh, thankfully they're not jerks like I was. <laughs> um, so just little things. I did a quick back view of this guy because they have like these, the idea here was like they have this like kind of stim packs that they jam in their back and it gets them all cranked up and, and crazy. And so there's like the little things. But if you look, that also looks like a skull, right? Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. I did a quick little tweak on, so there's these like kind of universal ball joints and from a concept, it's just most, I think most people would get it, but I, I showed that it's like, well, the thing is a circle and these little cylinders here are sticking in and they can turn, you know, right or left and they can move up and down. So it's basically, you know, the, the, the animators and the riggers can totally make magic out of just the dumbest little things like that, but they probably have better ideas for it than I do. Um, but that's what I did. So I, I made this, this melee character, right? And usually the melee character or the the range, like so take with orcs and night elves, their basic character on night elves was the archer, you know, the basic character on the orcs uh, or the humans was the footman and the grunt. So if there was a poster, this would be the main guy. Or if there was a first action figure made, it would be this guy, right? So I gave him a big, you know, mechanized hand, and it, you can't really tell right here. Maybe you can see more when I do the, show you the colors. Sort of a, a, a mechanical leg. And then the rest is just the regular boot with, you know, bolted in armor. The regular arm with a big old blade. Nice, basic, asymmetrical design everywhere from, you know, the shapes of the hands, the shoulder pads, the little juice tanks. Um, one of the things I thought that we could do was to save time. Because, again, these, you know, creeps, you want them to be cool. Because, you know, who knows, like a creep can turn into the murloc and the murloc was the biggest, you know, creep of all in Warcraft. So every one of these you make, try to keep in mind that it may it may catch on for some reason. Now, I don't know if old, you know, Mad Axe here or whatever <laughs> will, will be the uh, poster boy, but you never know. Um, but what I did is I, I kept the same legs as you see here on the scavenger base or melee guy, the scavenger range and then the scavenger boss. Now, what one could do, it's the same amount of work, but if you really, it, in, in RTSs real quick, the main focus on bipeds, specifically, you know, the human sized ones that aren't huge, it's their upper torso, right? So you really want like shoulders, hands, um, you know, maybe their head if it's something special about it. That's why I put this mohawk on the guy because it'll be a nice, you know, cool visual indicator. Um, you know, like, yeah, so I, I think it's, a, it, plus it's like classic Mad Max, you know. Um, but the legs, you don't really see too much. So I, I thought it, maybe they don't have to spend as much time on the legs. They can save some time on building this model because, you know, a lot of the, the work you want to be awesome. But if it's just a creep camp, you know, don't burn all your energy on that. You have, you know, the real units that, that people play and the art that are in the armies those are more important to really flesh out and make super iconic because you're playing with groups of them you know you need to be able to pick out which one is the this versus the that you know but what you could do is say this character he could have say this is a uh, his right leg our left leg here it could be this left leg and you flip it and so it could have the same legs and then the, this character you could take you know this right leg and flip it and have both the same. And then the boss could have the asymmetrical um, sort of thing. So you could get more variety on the legs if it's important. I didn't worry about it because I really didn't want to worry about... I, I just wanted to focus on the upper torso area and then the weapons and, and you know, some key little features like our mohawks or his, you know, junker juice or whatever they're going to call it. 
Um, so from here, I start adding in the shadow layer. And normally I just start out gray, but I gave them a variety of colors. This, you don't really see this in the, in the game, but I just did it for myself because I wanted to make them feel a little different. Um, so you get the tone of them. But basically, I just kind of, they're, again, they're not real shadows. I kind of just threw in shapes that I think would good or darkened areas that I thought would look good. Um, and then, you know, let me just show you some more. So, you know, this, this flame throwing uh, scavenger ranged unit I put on his back. You can see the little outline of this thing, but this is his, his tanks back there. Tanks, you're welcome. Uh, you know, and our boss has these cool missile pods and things like that. So I, I try to show like, okay, well, maybe this, this is complicated. So if there, that's what the view looks like from the back. And maybe, you know, because he's got this structure around him, maybe a quick view of the side, you know, this little plus sign here in the circle, that's where the arms and shoulders would plug into. Did a little side view of the missile launchers too. Now, this might not be acceptable for like some outsourcing companies or, you know, when you're working with um, people that you're not familiar with, but this is exactly what I did when we were working on StarCraft 2, Warcraft 3, all these games. I've worked with those guys, you know, through StarCraft, through Heroes, all these. They're used to my stuff and they know where to uh, improve on my failures and add where it needs to be. <laughs> um, Next, what I did, and this is kind of this is kind of silly, but so I just picked this. This is not a color scheme, but these are kind of like my basic basic colors I'll use when I'm trying to put in areas of like, okay, well, what would be team color? So red for me is always team color number one. Blue is like, well, what's the base color of this unit? And then the green, I sometimes use yellow, you know, the primary colors for either painting or computers. Um, this is like sort of the tertiary uh, sort of color thing. So, you know, I, you could see his eyes and stuff like that would be glowing as well. But I didn't, you know, as much as I love this, this color scheme is probably one of my favorites. These are junkers, right? These are scavengers. These are dudes that live in the wasteland. So... I wanted to convey kind of like a lot of this stuff looks like looks like construction equipment or you know kind of post military kind of stuff so I went with the color scheme of like sort of a military green and then also this kind of yellow construction stuff now if there were real scavengers in the wasteland it wouldn't be all this uniform but we're making a game right and whenever I design characters in my mind they're action figures and I want to see, you know, I don't want this little minuscule dry brushing and all. That's great for miniatures if you're playing like tabletop games and all that. But when you got an action figure, you want some big, bold colors and just making it feel, I don't know, like a, like a toy. Whenever I do artwork, my characters, I want to feel like action figures. And that's not great, too, because sometimes I feel my characters are kind of stiff. Um, not as many points of articulation as the modern day action figures. <laughs> and then whenever they're fighting on a background, that's kind of like the playset. That's the Star Wars Cantina playset, or that's the Castle Grayskull. Um, so I did a, a quick color sort of scheme on these characters, trying to keep them all the same. As you can see here, the secondary or the tertiary greens are going to be behind his little, uh, you know, flamethrower welder's mask. Um, and he'll also have this little bit of flame, just like, as you can see here, he's got like this, just like burning flame mohawk on top, of his head, on top of his head. Next to these, you know, tanks of gas, which, you know, well, they're scavengers and they're, there's a reason why there's not many of them, I guess. <laughs> and then the colors on the boss, uh, I kept as well with the, you know, the construction yellow and then the military stuff. But where where I could, I changed things up, like for the the scavenger flamethrower guy, he's, his little shoulder pads are like the yellow construction where Big Boss Man is more military with parts of the, the construction welded on there. Um, okay, and then going back, so you remember, uh, let me focus on our main boy here. So you remember there was like the, the block outs with the red being the team color and the you know blue being the secondary. So what I did is, you know, here is the base color and then I went and did the base color with the team color. Now, this is just suggested um, for the artists on the team. 
team color is very important. You want to know which is your enemy versus which is your character. Um, so he may not need this much team color. I love team color. Like to me, it, it, I, I love seeing that because it's it's like you could be having the same battle, the same uh, army versus the same army, but yours has the blue and theirs has the red. And it's like, oh, oh, look at this guy. He's got the green. That looks so cool. So maybe this is too kaleidoscopic. Um, and they could probably just take the, change the yellow on on Mad Axe's uh, head and, and and neck area. One of those are traps. Um, you could make that whole area team color, or you could even make the the Junkers juice team color. So one Junkers with the green team color have the green juice. One Junkers with the uh, the red team color have the red red or orange. You got to be careful when you do certain team colors. Because uh, certain colors like red can have a tendency to turn to pink. And, you know, that's not scavenger. That's cosmopolitan. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the team color take. And as you see, and I, I, I still have another character to show you. So he has the red mohawk. He's got the red firehawk. Firehawk. Sounds like a Marvel character. And he's got the red, like, uh, police siren sort of thing. And uh, again, using that, that tertiary color scheme of the green in there. All right, so next what I'll do is I'll, I'll change it off the team color and just go back to regular because this is, at base, this is what they would look like. So then after I've established the base colors, this is really all the artist would need. But depending on the, like, so for example, in Heroes of the Storm, you had your characters on the game, but then they were also in the store. Right, and they would have to be, uh, you know, three times as large as they are in game, or four, whatever it is. But you didn't want to make the characters too busy, because when you played them in game, which is the most important thing, you wanted a nice clean read. But then there's also the opposite when you're trying to sell like a new hero or a new skin, you know, that's important as well. You want someone to see what they're buying and go, oh, that looks cool. So there's usually a fine uh, blend between the between there. And so what I will do is I'll go in after that uh, and I'll start putting in some highlights, which in, in you know, uh, video games, it's just what they call a specular map, how shiny things are, how dull they are, things like that. And it's advanced far beyond what I remember doing. I haven't created 3D models since I think, I don't know, Starcraft 2 in the Zerg campaign, Heart of the Swarm which was what, 2012? So it's been a while. But so yeah, as you can see, I'll turn the highlights on and off. You can see the difference it makes. So there's the flat colors and then there's the, uh, the highlights. And then uh, another area that I like to do is I just call it spots. And then this is just more for the concept. This is for me to round it out. And basically what I'm doing here is uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. I will uh, add little bits, like as you can see on Big Boss Man's torso here. He gets a little couple chips, little couple like glowy um, bullet holes and things like that. Let's see, you know the the, the can up here gets uh, there we go uh, gets a little bit more dinged up and things like that. And I, I, I just put like an extra kind of just gradient. Um, normally I wouldn't put it on this layer so you can see down um, in the, the legs here, the, the little spots, the little nicks and dings and all that. Now, you're not going to see any of that from GameView. So, I mean, you, you really don't have to do that. But it's nice to have it if the characters are going to be larger, especially on like more important characters. I just did this because I, I figured it was... Uh, you know, an extra level of detail they could choose to omit. I mean, they could really, this is really all they need. Uh, what are the base colors? Um, what are the base proportions of the characters? You know, normally, um, you know, I also try to include this. So when they're making the model, they can just build this and then build the pieces on it. Maybe they have a bulky character that they can already use, or maybe this character's too, you know, wide. I mean, this guy's like friggin' Ronnie Coleman, Olympia level right there. Um, no, he's not as big. Ronnie Coleman's bigger. <laughs> um, 
but they can they can have this so they can see what the base model is and then build off of it or if they have a character that's similar because he may be thinner you know if it's if it's based on their current rig now remember when i was telling you that one of the parameters was use the base biped sort of we want to use the same biped model and i go okay well we have four characters it's going to be hard to make them all look different or at least it would you know it take more time so one of the things i did is i remembered um there's like this dog you know patrol dog unit um in the game i've only seen screenshots of it but i remember seeing that i go oh well how cool would it be let me go back to our uh, base so here's the base uh model for the pooch um and i just assumed they would just use the one they have but how cool would it be to have this this junkyard scavenger dog that's just as much bits of cybernetic as uh as their as their uh the biped units their masters you know um, but I thought that would be cool. And then because it's going to be a unit, we got to add team color. So I add the Mohawk, like everyone, all the other characters have Mohawks. Um, he's got the Firehawk and boss here has the, the light Hawk or whatever the, <laughs> the, the, the siren lock. That's not a good name. We'll think of something later. That's not cool. So basically though, that is... That is the walkthrough for some of the scavengers, the NPC uh, creep camps that I did for Frost Giant. Now, what I think would be fun is we apply the same sort of thing to the Frost Giant mascot, right? This is a biped, but if we're building a, you know, a creep camp out of him, right? So... Maybe this is the base one and we want to build like more of a warrior, uh, the melee, you know, heavy melee one. So we're going to add some tusks and, you know, maybe give them an axe, right? All right, cool. So that's our melee frost giant. Well, what do we do for range? Well, you could give someone a bow or something like that. But for frost giants, I like the in old Norse mythology, giants were, you know, magical creatures as well. So... Let's make our range guy like a, a spell casting wizard frost giant. There we go. So that's our range dude. Um, and now, what are we going to do for the boss? Do we want to keep the beard? Say we'll keep the beard. We can also do a color change on that. But I think the boss needs some horns. Because right, this one, the base one just has regular horns. Right? The melee guy has a, a, an axe. Well, this guy has an axe and hammer, right? The something is missing. What does a boss of frost giants need? Shoulder pads, we have it. Hail, yes, look at that. So there we go. That is my walkthrough of the creep camps. That is my walkthrough of drawing the frost giant uh, creep camp there. Let's return him to his former glory all right we, hope we still got the beard let's take that off and the, all right look at those little tuskies okay so we're back to the frost giant all right panda wands well i hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough i have to say i've been having a blast working with my old buddies again uh it's been too many years but i'm at a really great uh point right now where i still get to work with my buddies at blizzard on games i get to work with my buddies at Frost Giant on games, and who knows, maybe there are a few more places that I'm working with that we will do in a future video. All right, Panda Wands, well, remember your ABCs. Always be creating. Hail!